an old dusty lens that smells a little bit like mothballs that came straight out of your grandfather's attic. Who would want that? Hold up, before you go selling that to your local pawn shop, let me tell you why you might have just found your own diamond in the rough. All right, now before we jump into my top reasons, I'm gonna to have to explain a little bit of exactly what a vintage lens is for those who don't know. For our purposes today, a vintage lens is any lens developed before the 90s, although we'll be mostly focusing on 70s and 80s lenses but you can find lenses that go as back as early as the turn of the 20th century. Now, a little disclaimer before we get started. To use a vintage lens, you're gonna need a lens adapter, but they are pretty commonly found and not that expensive. I'll explain more about that at the end of the video. My first reason why you need a vintage lens is the cost. They are significantly cheaper than any other new glass you can buy on the market right now. New glass can set you back upwards of $1,000, tens of thousands of dollars if you're looking for a city lens, whereas the vintage alternative will cost about one tenth the price on average. Take myself for an example. The other day I went out to a flea market and I bought two beautiful vintage lenses for about $40. That is an amazing deal, $20 a piece. Now you might be thinking, all right, that's great, but doesn't quality reflect in price? Not necessarily, due to their all metal construction and great care that is generally taken when handling them, due to the fact that only photographers and videographers generally bought lenses in the 70s and 80s, they're in fantastic condition. They feel great in the hands and will be able to take a beating and keep going. This is great for any kind of guerrilla shooting or any kind of outdoor photography or videography in general because they can take the hits and keep on going. The second reason why you need a vintage lens is the full manual control that comes with it. Now, with these lenses, you have full control of f-stop within the lens, and you also have full control over the focus ring. No more relying on autofocus or in-camera software. It's all on you. And this will actually make you a much better cinematographer and videographer in the long run. It's the only thing you have to rely on is yourself and the light you're given. Now, my third reason is the unique bokeh and lens effects that come with these vintage lenses. Each lens has their own special unique feel to them, and that's the half the fun going to search for these lenses, because you never know what you're going to get, and each one is unique in its own sense. These older lenses generally tend to feel very organic and artsy and cinematic looking. This is because our eye is generally accustomed to seeing these kind of lenses in our old timey favorite movies from our childhood, opposed to the clinical sharpness of the modern lenses today. Now, keep in mind, this isn't a do-all lens. For some things, you still do want a modern lens, such as documentaries and wildlife photography, for example, where you want to keep intact that sharpness for the viewer. Reason number four, you can turn these vintage lenses into cine lenses with the addition of a gear ring and declicking the aperture. Now this is fantastic for anyone who's on a budget but still wants to get those really smooth focus pulls and pushes. Now I'm not really qualified to talk on this since I haven't done it and the process is a little bit complicated but not undoable. So I'll be including a link in the description which will tell you exactly how to do this if you want to attempt it yourself. First big question you might be asking is, now where do I get these fantastic vintage lenses? Actually they're pretty easy to find. You can find them on almost any online selling platform such as eBay, Craigslist, Kijiji if you're in Canada, and many, many more. Also, if you're more of a brick and mortar kind of person, you can head to your local antique market or a flea market and most likely find some there. Now, keep in mind, some people know the value of these lenses and some don't. So don't be afraid to haggle with the price and try to get it down as low as possible. All right, so you bought that fancy vintage lens. Now what? Well, the first thing you need to do is also buy an adapter that's specialized for your lens and for your camera. Every lens is different depending on the company, so you have to be really careful with what kind of model you have and what kind of mount your camera is. For example, the vintage lens that I'm using right now is an FD mount and I have to mount that to my modern EOS mount. Next, you want to get your lens mount adapter that you got. Now, be very careful with these because you don't want these scratching either or else that will also affect the quality of your image. 
I'm gonna take that ring boot from the case. Now these are gonna mount onto the back of the lens. Now this one, simply align the dots, red dot to red dot on this lens. So simply gonna do that, like so. Twist, turn, locks in nicely. There we go, we're locked in. There we go, now you have the lens. It's as simple as that. It's really not a difficult thing to do, but you have to be very careful just to make sure not to scratch anything. You don't want to ruin the picture quality that your new, or I guess old, but new lens will give you. All right, everyone, that wraps up my video today about why you need a vintage lens in your collection. I hope you guys enjoy it and come back for more. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.